I'm Lisa, the artist behind Lockery Fine Art. Today's tutorial is a piece I've done in colored pencil of this little girl. I've done this on Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press Watercolor Paper 140 pounds. I mostly used my Polychromos colored pencils on this one, but I did also use my Karen Dash, current Karen Dash, am I saying it right this time? Luminance pencils. I have a handful of those that I did use on this piece. If you're not wanting to invest in the whole set of the Luminance pencils, I would recommend getting at least the whites and creams and some of the more pale opaque colors, especially ones you would use on a portrait. They turned out to be so handy and blended so nice and worked really, really well alongside of my polychromos. Really, really complemented each other nicely. I know you guys are always asking me what colors I'm using. There are just a lot. I use a lot of colors when I'm working. I will list off most of them that I remember using in the video description, but don't hold me to that. I may be missing a few because, because seriously, I use so many colors and, and do so many layers when I work. If you're new here, I have video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings and drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, and vlogs most weekends. So make sure you subscribe, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, all those social media sites. Links are below in the video description and you can follow me there and see real-time clips of whatever it is that I am currently working on. I have several ones of this one actually in progress posted over on my Facebook page that are mostly like five minute long real-time clips so you can see the actual pencil strokes that I'm using or making, however you want to word that. Now, on to the tutorial. I'm starting with the flower on the hat. My first few layers are being done very, very lightly. I've outlined everything in a darker blue. Normally, I would say to avoid lining things out like this, but in this case, I know that there will be dark shadows under each petal, so I can get away with it. This is helpful because it'll keep me from losing all those petal lines that I drew in in graphite. You can see that my graphite lines are quite light. I've used a 6H lead with a very light hand so that those lines won't show up later in different areas of the piece, especially the lighter areas. Now that I have the base layer of light blue on the whole flower, I'm building up my shadows with the darker blue. While I know that I'm going to use black on some of these petal shadows, I don't want to start off that dark. It's going to look better and have far more depth if I slowly and very, very lightly build up each layer. At this point, I'm still keeping a very light hand. I don't want to add too much pressure and damage or flatten out the tooth of the paper so that it won't take the additional layers that I know I'm going to need. I'm using several blues and even a shade of purple to get the colors that I want in this flower. I have the colors of most of the pencils I used listed below in the video description. I'm not too worried about each petal being the perfect, perfect color. Right now, my main concern is to just get a lot of layers and to get my general contrast blocked in. Once I have everything blocked in on the flower, I use my Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner with a synthetic filbert brush to blend everything out. As you can see, this base coat of blending actually dulls the color a bit. That's fine because I'm going to go back over and start building up more colors once the paint thinner dries. Using this method of blending keeps me from damaging the paper. I keep layering with a light hand as to not flatten out the tooth of the paper. The more layers, the better in my opinion. I'm really focusing more on better defining the shadows and highlights at this point. The white that I'm using for the highlights is the Luminance pencil. It's more opaque than the Polychromos white. It may seem silly to spend so much time on a flower and a hat in a portrait. The thing is, the hat is a major reason to why this piece is as strong as it is. The detail in the hat and the flower are part of where the camera actually focused on. If I skip out and call it done too early, my entire portrait is going to suffer for it. At least half of the work done on this piece was done on the hat and the flower itself. It really was what I considered the hard part of this piece. The face was a breeze after all of this detail. I'm still going to need to go back and clean up and better define some of those petals, but I'm moving on to the crystal now. Nothing on this crystal is actually white. I did use a white pencil on top of some of my pale gray colors for highlighted areas, but never straight white. I used both cool and warm grays for the crystal along with some blues and that I had used in the flower itself. I also went back and used a little bit of black, but very sparingly on the black itself. One mistake that we make a lot as artists is to think that because something is light that we should shade or paint it with straight white paint. Very, very rarely is anything going to be left straight white. White by itself is generally used sparingly, keeping the straight white for smaller highlights that really need to stand out or sparkle. Onto the detail work of the hat. I'm using the same blues that I used on the flower. I start with blocking in some of the dark areas where the hair is first with a light shading of black. Then fill in the base of the hat itself with a light blue. Once that is blocked in, I go back in and start focusing on the detail with the darker blues. I'm using several shades here, just like I did on the flower. 
And it's seriously important not to skip out on the detail here. Pay close attention to your reference photo. On my photo, it's the focus is closest to the flower and it blurs out towards the outside edge of the piece. All of these little details work together in creating a very realistic piece. So if you start getting lazy and not wanting to work on certain areas anymore, take a break and then come back to it. But again, very, very important to focus on these details. For the other side of the hat, this is going to be much darker as it falls within a shadow. I start again by layering the base shade of blue and then adding black in where the hair is going to show through. The shadow is strong enough here that the hair will remain black. The detail on this side is much softer than it was on the other side. Now that I've got that side blocked in, it's much easier to see where I need to darken up areas of my flower so I can go back and do that. I'm also adding highlights with my white pencil again just for those little shine marks. Into the hair, I loosely block in with a shade of brown where each strand of hair is going to go. Keep a very light hand to start with, like everywhere else on the piece, and build it up slowly. It's better to go too light and need to darken your values later than to go too dark to start with. Once I get those lighter browns blocked in, I go through and start using some of the yellow ochre and brown ochres to get the lighter areas of her hair and some of the reddish tones. I get all of the hair loosely blocked in and then I'm going to blend it out with my paint thinner just to get a base coat. I'll come back and add more detail to all of that later. Onto the eyes, one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make when painting or drawing eyes is to make the whites actually white in the eye. Only the highlights are really going to be white. I'm using a pale gray on mine. For the iris of the eye, I am slowly building up several colors in here. I start with a pale, pale green and then build up different shades of blues and grays. I'm also adding more pinks and darker grays to the outside white area of the eye. There is so much layering to get this look. The eyes are going to be the most important part of your painting or drawing, so spend extra time to get them just right and use a lot of colors. As I build up the skin tones around the eye, I'm using an off-white color first, one of my luminance pencils, and then adding various shades of pink, blues, and browns on top. I'm blending a lot of that out by adding additional whites and creams on top of it so I'm burnishing a bit to get that nice smooth color. Artists would stop here and call that eye finished. Yes, it could be called finished, but if you keep working on it, it will look so much better. Don't call your work or areas of your work finished too soon. Just continuously work on them. You can see even the iris or part, the white of the eye. I continuously go back and do touch-ups there. Just keep working on it. I'm using that cream-colored luminance pencil to get a base for the rest of the skin tone. I've lightly blocked in areas of the nose so that I don't lose those lines, but I'll go back later to actually finish those areas. I'm using a sepia color with some browns to block in the darker shadowed areas of her face, outlined in a purplish pink tone. I then continue on with cream everywhere else. I'm still working with an extremely light hand on these layers. Because I intend to go back over these shadowed areas with white and cream, I'm going quite a bit darker than I'll want my end result to be. If I go too light of a shade, it'll be way too light when I layer over it with the white. When I add the white and cream over it, it creates a nice unified blended look over the skin. I blended the first layers out, out with paint thinner and then went back and darkened them up even more with the browns and grays and then blended them out again. Now you can see I am working in with that white colored pencil and how it just kind of brings all of that skin tone and those shadows together. I blend that out with the Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner and it basically gives me what I would call a glaze in painting where I've just got this nice soft soft smoky look there the exact same thing with the shadows on her neck and shoulder. Just going too dark to start with and then going on top of it with the white to tone it all down and make it kind of blend in with the rest of her neck. When I get the skin on the side of her face blocked in, I can go in and start better defining the hair that's sticking out of the hat. I now focus more on getting my color correct and getting some of the darks darker. The layering process that I did on the shadow of her, her face, I repeat several times to build up more depth. I darken it quite a bit and then I go over it with white and blend it out very softly with my paint thinner. Don't use a heavy hand or too stiff of a brush when blending out with a paint thinner when you're using this technique because you'll remove too much of the white and it's very, very important that that white actually does have a fair amount of coverage. Another thing to note is that the polychromos white is not opaque enough for this method to work. You'll want a softer wax-based pencil for that. Her nose, I'm using a reddish brown color to create the curves of her nose. This one area of the piece has more of an orangey tint than anywhere else because of how the light is hitting the area. Continue to build up like I did on the other areas of her face, first shading too dark and then adding white over it all. I'm also doing a bit of burnishing with the white pencil on some of these smaller areas. Her mouth, I start with a pale, pale pink. Do not make heavy outlines for the lips. I cannot stress this enough unless it's a woman wearing heavy lipstick. Everyone else should have a soft transition from the lip fading into the skin so that you create a natural look. I used white to create some of the shine marks, but I had left that area fairly light to start with. 
Now I have to make the shadow of her cheek fade into her chin. I start by outlining the bottom section and layer similar to how I layered the cheek, just not quite as dark. Blend out what I have with paint thinner and continue to layer. I am working now on the lips, better defining the dark areas on the inside. And I want that inside area to so fade softly from the really dark onto her lip. I don't want harsh, harsh lines in there at all. To her outside eye, I want this to be slightly blurred and out of focus. This is pretty easy to do. You're going to work that eye much like you did the first eye and that was in focus, but use your white pencil to burnish and blend the colors together slightly. This gives you that out of focus look warm grays to block in the background. Once I get a couple layers in, I'll blend it out with paint thinner. Then layer more grays on top of that and blend it out with paint thinner again. Then I'm going to go over it with a softer luminance pencil in white to really tone it all down and blend it into the side of her face so I get that nice soft look. Another area where the polychromos white won't achieve that look. It's too translucent so it doesn't really cover dark areas well. Switch to a softer wax based white pencil for that. Now that everything is in, I just keep working on smaller details around the face, blending more where I need areas softer and darkening up areas where I need more contrast. Generally, I tell people when you think you're done with a piece, walk away from it for a few hours or a few days and then come back to it and plan on spending another few hours working on it just to refine everything better because when you look at it for too long, you start missing stuff. But when you step away from it and come back, it makes it a lot easier to catch those last little details that you need to work on. In my case, I really needed a whole lot more blue in different areas of her skin to cool off some of those zones. That's it for this tutorial. I hope it helped you guys out. I am going to be uploading a longer video just focusing on drawing her eye, so watch for that video in the near future. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please let me know in the comments below or give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Don't forget to head back for this weekend's vlog. I don't even know what I'm talking about this weekend. I have some ideas, though. I'll see you Saturday.